I'm here at Secord Dam and if you look behind me, you can see there is some work going on here. So we'll be going to check that out very soon. But before we get this video started, I wanted to thank my Patreons as well as people who have been sending me letters through the mail. Let me turn this camera around. You can see out over top of Secord Lake, still down in its drawn down level. Looks like there's quite a bit of vegetation growth going on. And yeah, work going on back here over the dam. So. Without further ado, let's get over there and see what's going on. I'm over here on the dam site now. You can see the divers now are down here getting ready to go in the water. And they're getting ready to pour. The concrete truck will be coming in in a couple minutes. But all this, all this uh, cement pouring is going to be done underneath the water, so you won't be able to really see anything from up here. And this is for the low-level outlet. So they're able to go ahead. Um, they're gonna pour, it's nice and flat down there so that they can put stop logs in here. Still have to put the angle brackets for those stop logs to slide in and out of here yet. But this will be used during the winter time. They can use the powerhouse to allow this to flow through here, in this low level outlet, so that they don't have uh, ice freezing up over here on the gates. So some of that pre-work that's going on right now pretty interesting. We'll be able to film a little bit more of this once the cement trucks start showing up. But again, a lot of this will just be underneath the water. Divers will be going down there trying to level it as much as they can, create a nice uh, flat base for those stop logs to go ahead and set on top of. Here is a photo a couple days after you can see the stop logs already in place. They went ahead, attached the angle brackets that those stop logs slide in and out of and I will be panning the picture down in a little while. But this is that area that those stop logs are sitting on, uh, made nice and flat so that they could go ahead and pump out the water down here in the very bottom, uh, directly behind Secord Dam. You see way down there in the very bottom of the hole the last time I was out there, uh, I did get a couple pictures from down in there. I wasn't able to actually go down there myself, but I did have a couple pictures that were provided up to me. Um, this is a confined space entry area down here in the bottom of the dam. Looking at this next picture here, you can see this is that area that they were working on pouring. So that area that the stop logs are sitting on top of. You can see there's still a lot of water uh, making its way through here, but you can see a couple of their pumps there that they're going ahead and pumping the water back over the top of the stop logs to create a nice dry work area down here. So the turbine is actually located directly to the left of where this photo was taken. I will have a couple more pictures to show you guys that in the next update video, but I wanted to go ahead, get this one out so that you guys can see what's going on. There's been a ton of progress out here at Secord Dam. You can see a little bit more of the platform that they made in here to be able to work. Um, there will also be a new sister wall poured alongside to patch up that side. We won't be able to see inside of the powerhouse today, but when Beer Line is here the next couple weeks evaluating, you know, what can be taken off of here, turbines, generators, what can be salvaged from here, we should be able to see uh, inside the powerhouse at that time. You can see where I'm standing over right now is inside of the shaft. So way down there at the very bottom would be the access point of where you could crawl down into. Also want to mention that we do have enough money for a live camera here at Secord Dam, so I just got to go ahead, uh, get some things arranged to get that installed out here. A few parts that are back ordered, but hopefully we'll be getting in those very soon, and then I can get that live camera installed here at Secord Dam, and you'll be able to watch what's happening here 24/7. Just a little bit more of an update since the last time I was filming out there in person. I uh, have a little bit more information to provide on that, so I do have all of the components to go ahead and get that live camera hooked up. Uh, Four Legs Task Force was able to get a pole set out there and now we're just working on getting the utilities there. So getting power and the internet connected and then I should be able to get out there, uh, get that camera, the live camera attached to the pole and then you guys will be able to see uh, what's going on out there 24-7, see all the progress that's going on. I don't have an exact time or deadline for when this will go up but I will definitely be posting uh, an update on the community page when this does go live. In this drone shot, the drone is probably about 20 feet in altitude, maybe 30 feet in altitude, facing towards the south. I uh, got a great shot of the concrete truck loading up the pumper truck that's going ahead, 
pumping that concrete down underneath the water, creating that nice level area that you saw in the photos for the stop lugs to go ahead and sit on. I will be sharing a little bit more information on that in the next video, and you guys will also be able to see in the powerhouse uh, some of the salvaging operation of some of the hydro components in that powerhouse. It uh, was pretty cool to see that. I'm working on editing that video uh, very shortly as well. But just a little bit more information as to what's going on here. So this is actually not uh, in the construction phase yet here for Secord Dam. They're classifying this as a pull-ahead project. So in the interim of receiving the full construction permit, uh, these are a few things that would need to be completed anyways, um, but they are able to go ahead and get them done prior to construction starting. So again, this will be the low level outlet that will be used to uh, pass water, mostly during the winter time. Uh, you may be able to go back and watch a couple of my videos of this area in the winter time. Freezes up quite a bit, especially on the gates. Um, they will be able to use where the turbines used to sit to pass the flows during the winter time so that the gates don't all ice up. And this is especially important with the crest gates because all that water will be flowing over the top of those crest gates during the winter. It will probably freeze up a little bit more than the tainer gates where the water used to pass underneath those gates. All the way up here at 400 feet in altitude, you can see the great view there. And in this shot, probably down about 50 feet in altitude uh, directly in front of the dam, you can see they have the uh, right tainer gate closed. Um, and this is because the divers were underneath the water over there. So just kind of creating a little bit better work environment so that they didn't have a lot of water, a lot of flow going past them while they were underneath trying to pour some of that concrete. You see how much water is flowing through uh, the one bay. Here's the view from the other side of the dam. You can see the water flowing through over the top of the rollways down there. And the tainer gates right here in their fully lifted position right now. And that water exiting the front side of the dam and heading on down the Titabwasi River. It's a Secord Dam Road right here in the background. First time actually being out here on site filming this, so let you guys see a little bit what's going on here yet. They still have the wenches on here uh, so that they have the ability to raise and lower these gates yet. And here at the very end is where I was just filming from over there on that side. You can see some of the work going on down here. So that's where they're going to be pouring that wall right down there at the bottom of the concrete pumper truck. And a shot of the powerhouse directly back here. A couple more wenches here. And you can see the water flowing over the top of the railways again, exiting Secord Dam. This gate is in the fully lower position uh, just so that there's no water kind of flowing over this direction, um, creating a little bit safer worker area for the dive crews that will be going down very shortly here. Here's the last shot I'm gonna get before the concrete trucks start showing up. You see some of these sensors that they have in place though, monitoring uh, the water level. So 0 0.57 feet. Not sure exactly where that one's taking the reading from. Looks like it's right down here. So that's the reading at the uh, front side of the dam. There's also one right up there where I was standing, monitoring the water level on the back side of the dam. Here's a great shot. You can see the water coming over the top of the spillway again. Gate one closed, gate two, open allowing all that flow to pass underneath the tainer gate here's that patch that they put in about probably about a year ago now um, it was during the winter time they patched up all that area where the concrete was falling off water going over the top of the sill and heading down river You can really tell 
how little water we do have right now here in mid-Michigan is it's not even coming over this side of the spillway and it's barely going over the top of the spillway on that side. Let me actually come around here to the other side. And I'll show you all that water is almost all jetting out through the spillway. They have holes there and there so that that water could be able to be drained from underneath there. Another shot down the Titabwasi River. I don't see any carp in here right now. This is usually the area that the carp like to sit right directly. Oh, there they are. I'm not sure if you can see those, but there's about 10 huge carp right there making their way up directly behind the powerhouse. They definitely really enjoy staying in this area. Almost every time I'm out here, I see them. And over here, you can see is the powerhouse. They also do have many prisms in place. So you can see that prism up there on that concrete that they're able to monitor if there's been any movement in the foundation of this dam. Kind of scoping things out, seeing where I'll be able to put the live camera as well. You can see there's a camera here. There's also one over there on that side of the dam. Hopefully we'll have a good location to put it here on Seacourt Dam. All right, let's head on back up to the top of the dam. I'll film a little bit of that concrete being poured underneath the water, and then I will be going, uh, getting that drone up in the air to get a few of those aerial views before work finishes up here. Hopefully you can hear me over the air compressor. Uh, this is the compressor for the divers that are underneath the water right now. See the cement truck back there in the background, just about ready to start pumping. And first off, they're gonna start pumping grout through all of the line, through the, the pumper truck lines. Uh, and I was told that's to kind of just coat the inside of this tubing because they're using a material in the actual cement that they will be pouring called Sika. And that Sika is relatively sticky really helps for when they're pouring underneath the water. So that coats that inside of that tube right there so that the Sika in the cement does not stick to the interior of that tubing. So they're just about ready to go ahead and start pouring that but they're waiting for the one more truck to show up, the cement truck, so that as soon as they're done pouring that grout they can follow it up with the cement truck and finish this pour. I wish I would have brought my other GoPro or my GoPro that can go in the dive housing. I think it would have been pretty cool to send the divers underneath the water uh, with that and film a little bit of this pouring underneath the water. Did hear from them though and they said it was very low visibility. Weren't able to see hardly anything down underneath there during the pour so probably wouldn't have been that good of footage anyways but would have been neat if it did turn out. So in this shot, I'm gonna go ahead, we are directly in front of the dam. We're gonna gain altitude a little bit higher um, with reference to where the live camera, where I will be able to install it, won't be actually on uh, the dam itself um, because there's going to be a lot of work going on here. So that is why it's being installed on a pole that's a little bit further away from the dam, I'm not actually attached anywhere close to the spillways or the powerhouse but I'm hoping that the location will be an area where we'll be able to see uh, the gates as well as Seacord Lake. I do have all my live cameras filming time-lapse photos, so it would be cool seeing those over the coming years. Concrete is going ahead and being pumped in now. See a little bit of the turbidity in the water here is from that first initial grout that they coated the tube with. I'm gonna go ahead now, go fly the drone film a little bit of this concrete going in the pumper truck. Pumper truck pumping it down to underneath the water to the divers to pour. Here's a couple factoids on Seacord Dam as a lot of people ask these questions all the time. Uh, so the estimated lake return date here is in 2024. Uh, the number of waterfront properties is 2015. The cost to repair this dam is 33.9 million. 
So if you divide that number by the number of waterfront properties, the back lots, uh, very complicated to figure out. Uh, the estimated annual capital assessment ranges from $115 to $460. And the construction is supposed to start in Q1 of 2023. So we are coming up on that very soon. Again, that is why they're doing some of these pull ahead projects. So as soon as Q1 hits, they'll be able to hit the ground running and getting some of that construction completed. Here is a shot of some of the lake bed vegetation. There has been a lot of work going on on all the dams of managing this vegetation. A lot of brush hogging. They're actually doing a few aerial treatments now that they have permits from to try to control the woody growth. Uh, they did a couple of test areas just to make sure um, that what they're spraying will kill uh, the woody trees and will not contaminate or kill any of the other species in this area. On my way out of here, but figured I'd show you guys a little bit more of what's here on site. You can see all the stop logs here and just the sheer size of these things. I mean, this has got to be probably 12 by 12. They're just massive. It's like they just made these ones up too because you can see some of the weld on here yet. See all they have to do, go ahead, get the angle brackets installed on the dam, and then they can go ahead Put those down in there start pumping the water out behind these stop logs to get access down in there to see turbine and everything else down in there underneath that powerhouse if you've enjoyed this video make sure you go down below hit that like button make sure you're subscribed to the channel this is only the beginning of refilling all four lakes rebuilding all five dams it's going to be a long road ahead but it is going to be very neat to watch and make sure you leave any questions and comments you have down below as well. And until the next one, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.